Hello again. I'm back with my little electronic pen gizmo, my live scribe here, and I want to show you how to calculate the area, moment of inertia of a triangle. And I'm going to draw it this way. So I'm going to have the base equal B. Big surprise there. And I'm going to have the height equals H. Again, big surprise. All right. I'm going to need to know the expression for that line right there. And if we remember that the, the equation for a line is y equals mx plus b, I'm going to call this just f of x for right now. Now, m is the slope. The slope is minus rise, with rise over run, which in my case is minus h over b. So it's minus h over b times x plus the point at which the line crosses the y-axis, and that's h. So there you go. f of x equals minus h over b times x plus h. And if you want to write that a, a tiny, tiny bit more uh, compactly, you can do that if you like, or even h times 1 minus x over b, whatever. Those are all the same thing. So whichever makes you happy, you have my blessing. So when we want to figure out the area moment of inertia, first thing you're going to do, like, like the rest of us do, is you're going to go ahead and look up the area moment of inertia in a book. And the book answer is 1 12th b h cubed. Well, that's one of the book answers. And you're thinking, how can that be? That expression right there is the area moment of inertia of a rectangle, not a triangle. Well, it is a rectangle, but it's a rectangle um, where the area moment of inertia is calculated about the centroid. For this problem, we're going to calculate the area moment of inertia about the uh, uh, bottom of the triangle right there. Okay. So we'll say calculate I about this axis, okay? And so since that is that's below the centroid of the triangle, it's a, it, it's a little easier to imagine you could get 1 12th bh cubed, that familiar expression. Well, there's several ways to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide the triangle up into little boxes here. And I'm going to figure out what the area moments of inertia of are, are, are for box 1, box 2, box 3, and so on. Well, the more boxes I put in there, the narrower they are, the closer that sum comes to the exact answer. And you can see where I'm headed here. When the width of those boxes goes to something infinitesimally small, of course the number of boxes gets very, very large, then the sum of those works out to be the exact answer. And that's pretty much calculus, so we're going to do that. So let's look at the uh, area moment of inertia for box 1. Well, I1 is 1 12 B. Well, I'm going to make those, those uh, capitals so we don't get them confused with the dimensions we're using here. There's AD squared. So 1 12 B H cubed plus AD squared. This expression right here is the area moment of inertia of the box about its centroid. And this expression here can uh, correct for the fact that we're not calculating the moment of inertia about that centroid. So let's let's plug in what we know right now. 1 12th, that's just a number. B is now going to be dx. These little boxes are dx wide, so that's my base. My height is going to be f of x cubed, okay, plus a. Well, a is just f of x times dx. Uh, times d squared. Well, that's f of x over 2 squared. Okay. This distance to the centroid of the box, that's h over 2 for that first box. For the next one, it's going to be down farther and down farther. And for this one, it's going to be down farther as well. And uh, by writing everything out the way I have, we take that into account. All right. So that's for box number 1. And uh, the way this works out, I can that's, that's true of every box. So what I can say is I total is the integral from 0 to b, since I'm integrating from there to there, okay, 1 12th f of x cubed times dx plus, all right, here's where, here's, this 2 is going to be squared, so I'm going to 1 over 4 f of x cubed, all right, also times dx. Now let's check about units here. Here I've got distance cubed. Well, wait a minute. I know the, the 
uh, units for area of moment of inertia is distance to the fourth power, that dx is also a distance. It's a very small distance, but it's a distance. And because it's a distance, it has units. So if we work this out, we're actually going to be calculating uh, from 0 to b. Uh, if we want to write, uh, compact this expression a little bit, make it uh, simpler, the 1 over 4 equals 3 over 12, and we get 4 over 12, so that makes 1 third, whoops, 1 third f of x cubed dx, and that's 1 over 3, and I'll pull that outside the integral just to be tidy here, and my f of x is h minus h over b times x, that's going to be cubed dx. All right, all I have to do now is integrate that, and I'll tell you right now I cheated. I went straight to the uh, Mathematica, and I calculated it that way. When you work that out, I total turns out to be 1 12 b h cubed. And that's the book answer. And that makes me happy. So there you go. This method of using these individual boxes works on just about any shape. I hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.